Out of all of Sega's franchises, none have been as strangely resilient or popular as its seminal, weird, beat-em-up Yakuza. Since its inception in 2005, Yakuza has grown to eight games in its main series and over a dozen spin-offs and remakes. The journey of its protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu, in the gritty Japanese underworld is coupled with some very weird and memorable stories and activities that combine to make Yakuza unlike any other franchise. <laughs> And while it's long been popular in Japan, it's gone on to become a cult classic franchise worldwide. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at the history of Yakuza to see how a simple game about the melodramatic life of a Japanese mobster became one of Sega's most prominent brands. Toshihiro Nagashi did not have the experience you'd expect when the franchise started. Before he began work on the game, he was best known for being the director on the Sega AM2 racing classic Daytona USA and the strange platformer Super Monkey Ball. Much of the development team had similar eclectic resumes, which makes Yakuza's premise all the stranger by comparison. Nagoshi envisioned a gritty crime drama set in the heart of Tokyo, where different groups of Yakuza in the all-encompassing Tojo clan fought for control of the underworld. Set in the fictional district of Kamurocho, a reimagining of the red light district of Kabukicho in the Shibuya ward of Tokyo, Yakuza would allow players to explore a small yet incredibly detailed world. But it's in the character of Kiryu that the franchise defined itself. Within the span of a few hours of gameplay, we see Kiryu go from a respected up-and-coming Yakuza to a convict who took the fall for his best friend, to a man hunted by his former allies. One minute he could be protecting a ten-year-old girl from the mobsters hunting her down, and the next he could be belting his heart out in a karaoke bar and taking arcade games way too seriously. When Yakuza was released to strong reviews and over one million copies sold in Japan, the game became the next big franchise for Sega. It was so popular that it got a feature film version directed by Takashi Miike. And just like every other video game movie, you probably shouldn't watch it. Of course, Sega wanted the series to succeed beyond Japan, which is why in localizing Yakuza, Sega pulled out all the stops to make it appeal to non-Japanese audiences. It did that with a cast that included Mark Hamill, Michael Madsen, Eliza Dushku, and Michael Rosenbaum. They handled the material well, but in translating Yakuza, the original localization toned down the weirdness and emphasized the criminal elements. The result was a game that didn't quite catch the idiosyncrasies and quirks that would come to define the franchise, leaving it in a precarious position overseas. Back in Japan, Sega continued to build on Yakuza's foundation with a sequel. Yakuza 2 began what would prove to be a comical trend of Kiryu being pulled back into the underworld despite his attempts to avoid it. And after its release, Sega went off and developed spin-off after spin-off to capitalize on the franchise while it was hot. These spin-offs included a journey to the Edo period, PSP-only side stories, and a bonafide zombie apocalypse. Clearly, they were not short on ideas. When it came time for Yakuza 3 to launch, Sega made a decision that would change the franchise forever. Importing it to other territories in 2009, Sega decided to cut many of the game's features and side stories due to its low popularity in those regions. The backlash was fierce from fans, and ever since, Sega has taken its time to localize Yakuza games, even if the process takes several years. Even so, Yakuza 4 and 5 never caught on in a big way outside of its home country. Not helping matters was the fact that Kiryu was no longer the only protagonist, and it was difficult for players to enter the series without an easy way to play the first few games on modern consoles. It wasn't until Yakuza 0 was localized in 2017 that the narrative began to change. Said in the 80s, Yakuza 0 is a prequel that follows the rise of Kiryu and his longtime rival slash friend Goro Majima at the height of the Japanese bubble economy. Faithfully recreating the streets of 1980s Tokyo and Osaka, the game proved attractive to many thanks to both its status as a prequel and the perfect mixture of beat-em-up gameplay and insane side quests. Recruiting a chicken named Nugget to manage your real estate properties, helping a young boy buy porn for the first time, and the extremely serious expressions that Kiryu makes racing glorified Hot Wheels are contrasted with the bone-breaking and over-the-top animations in combat. Word of mouth spread quickly, and before long, Yakuza finally broke through outside of Japan. Capitalizing on this, Sega would release remakes of Yakuza 1 and 2 called Yakuza Kiwami and Yakuza Kiwami 2 to bring the PlayStation 2 entries to modern consoles. Yakuza's newfound popularity meant the finale to Kiryu's saga, Yakuza 6 Song of Life, was much anticipated, but also bittersweet. It marked the end of a journey that spanned over a decade with Kiryu finally exiting his role as the Dragon of Dojima for the final time. 
Sega has since followed Yakuza 6's release with remastered versions of Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 for the PlayStation 4, meaning every main entry is playable on the same console for the first time ever. What's more, developer Ryu Ga Gotaku Studio has been able to take the Yakuza formula in entirely new directions thanks to new spin-offs. Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise plays like a Yakuza game, but is set in the incredibly masculine and apocalyptic world of the famous manga of the same name. And for the first time ever, players could explore Kamurocho on the other side of the law in Judge Eyes, known as Judgment in the West, where you played as a private detective. But that formula will soon change. The latest Yakuza game, Yakuza Like a Dragon, is the first main entry that will not star Kiryu. Instead, it stars Ichiban Kasuga, who is far wilder than Kiryu ever was. He's also a big fan of Dragon Quest, which is important because the game is actually a JRPG in the style of the legendary franchise. It's a huge risk, but one that Sega wants to take in order to move the series in new directions. However, so long as it retains that weird melodramatic spirit that made Yakuza what it is today, I don't see that being much of an issue. Because whatever form Yakuza takes in the future, you can bet it will remain one of the most original franchises of the millennium.